This is El Castillo, the famous temple of Kukul Khan at Chichen Itza. Now if we shrunk these people down to the size of a grain of rice, this pyramid would be roughly the right size to fit in the palm of my hand. But there's another pyramid that wouldn't fit in the palm of my hand, just an hour and a half down the road from Chichen Itza. It's one of the largest pyramids in all of Mexico. It's so big that it's three times wider than the Temple of Kukul Khan on each side, making it at least ten times the size. It's a bit taller too, and it probably would have had a temple on the top. In fact, it's so big that when you're on top of it, it's easy to forget that you're on a pyramid at all. And according to the head of Ina, the Institute of Anthropology and History, it's the least visited pyramid in the state of Yucatan. And it's not the only pyramid in Izamal either. There are six or seven others of various sizes and in various states of preservation. But who built these pyramids, and when, and why? And why is every building in the city yellow? Today I'm going to try to answer some of these questions about the ancient holy yellow city of Izamal. I'll get back to the pyramids in a second, but first let me tell you about this paint. On the way into this town, uh, I passed a Sherman Williams paint store, and I kind of wish it was closer because I would love to see their selection of paint. There are a few theories as to why all the buildings are yellow. And the first one has to do with this building. Convento de San Antonio de Padua. Founded in 1549, this convent, which is actually a monastery, is one of the oldest in the Americas, and was once the headquarters of the Catholic Church in Yucatan. For that reason, it welcomed a very special guest in 1993. Indígena amigo. El Papa está contigo. Pope John Paul II came to Izamal to consecrate a miraculous statue of the Virgin Mary by giving it a silver crown, which can still be seen in the back of the church today. And he gave a speech about the history of relations between the church and indigenous peoples. At the time, some people pointed out that this may have been an odd choice of location to do that, because even though the monastery was built in the 16th century, it was built on top of a Maya pyramid from the 4th century, named Pophol Chak. The bishop of Izamal, Diego de Landa, ordered that pyramid to be destroyed in order to build the monastery. This would have been in ancient times the grand acropolis of Izamal. And on top of this, uh, in place of those arches, there would have been many more buildings. Uh, there would have been probably tombs, uh, richly sculptured stucco artwork, carvings of faces and maybe even monsters' faces with uh, teeth and mouths that one could walk into. And in there would be buried the most important people of the city. There would be rooms painted with uh, all kinds of murals and there would have been statues uh, carved with the history of the city and artwork and uh, Mayan writing with dates, important events that happened, and all of that was destroyed, and all of that stone was used to build this church. And this courtyard is supposedly the second largest in the world of any Catholic church being beaten only by the Vatican itself. Many people say that it was painted that way in 1993 in the colors of the Vatican flag to welcome the Pope. And just like the Vatican flag, it's yellow and white. And that's the first theory as to why all the buildings of Izamal are yellow. Let's check out another pyramid. Perhaps you've seen this illustration before. This was made by the English artist Frederick Catherwood in 1842. He released many famous illustrations of Maya ruins, including this one, which, as you can see, is in Izamal. In fact, it's right across the street from the church. And if you read the journal of Frederick Catherwood's traveling companion, John Lloyd Stevens, this pyramid and giant stone face were actually in the backyard of a house in which they were staying in Izamal. The giant stone face is gone. The last known picture of it was taken in the late 1800s, and it seems to have gone off to live a life of its own. But the building is still there, and so is the pyramid. Today the building houses a handicraft museum, filled with objects made by artisans from the area. There's what's left of the Kabul. 
Behind me, you can see just a little bit of what's left of the Kabul. And uh, the shopkeeper here said that they are restoring it, so maybe they'll make it more accessible, but right now it's just surrounded by a whole block of shops. Eventually I found someone who let me into their backyard so I could see the pyramid called the Kabul. That is the Kabul. But this is as close as I could get. That brings us to the third pyramid, the Kinich Kakmo, named after the sun god Lord Kinich. The Kakmo part refers to the sun god taking on the form of a fiery macaw, which, according to legend, would swoop down and take offerings from the temple. Uh, this is a great platform. Oh, look, there's carving of the sun, it looks like. This is a solar pyramid dedicated to the sun god, Kinich. This entire platform is 200 meters by 180. As you can see, the full name is Kinich Ka'akmo. Uh, kin means the sun, each means the face or the eyes of. And ka'ak means fire, and mo means a macaw. So this is the temple of the fiery sun-faced macaw. You can see it's in a ruinous state, but this entire platform, very difficult to walk on, uh, is just the base. And there's a pyramid on top of it. And that pyramid reaches a total height of 34 meters. You can see that the corners of this pyramid are round as well. And that was a defining feature of the city of Izamal and its structures, and was also exported in the immediate area to places like Ake and other uh, smaller settlements in the region. This was uh, the capital of the region and a, this was the largest pyramid in the region. And it is said that offerings would be made up there and the giant fiery-faced uh, Macau of the sun god, the manifestation of the sun god, Kinich, who himself is a manifestation of Izamna, would appear there and collect the offerings. This is a pretty steep pyramid, and this part is uh, in pretty rough shape. You can see that in every direction for miles and miles and miles, there's jungle beyond the city of Izamal. And probably there are still undiscovered pyramids and remains out there. You can see that there would have been some kind of temple building here, some right angles, and down below there's a little right angle there. It's quite windy up here. So this pyramid, uh, if you include the this platform, this giant platform, that's uh, the third or fourth largest pyramid ever built by the Mayans, by volume. Uh, the, although it's pretty tall, I think the tallest one is somewhere around 48 meters, something like that, and this one is 34, so it's, it's getting there. That brings us to the second theory about why all the buildings are yellow. If you look at old photos of Izamal, you'll see that the buildings were painted yellow long before the Pope ever arrived. Because of this, some people think that painting the buildings yellow is an ancient custom, which dates back to the ancient Maya and the worship of the sun god, Kinich. I wanted to go to a fourth pyramid, called Izamnatul, which is dedicated to the creator god, Izamna, after which the city of Izamal is named. But when I got there, it was closed. Yep, the pyramid is closed. Here's what it looks like from the air. It is thought that the four pyramids that I just showed you used to form the four edges of a grand plaza, which used to be 200 by 300 meters in size, similar to plazas in Ake or other ancient Maya cities. And it would have been one of the largest that they ever built but it has since been overbuilt with new modern buildings.
All right, I think that's it from Izamal, the yellow city of the sun god Kinich, Ka'akmo, and also the creator god Izamna. Izamal is located about one hour to the east of Merida, and now it has its own train station, so it's easily accessible. If you'd like to support this channel, please consider becoming a patron at the link in the description.